Well, welcome to the 700 Club. We've got a great program for you today, but I'm going to start with my lovely co-hostess who was at a banquet celebrating in Florida something. Well, we were out on the beach. It was actually yeah. the first annual family beach fest sponsored by or presented by the Christian Surfers of Pensacola. Christian and uh, the Christian Surfers, we had Cutlass, the Christian recording artist there. Yeah. We had speakers, like people were praising the Lord right on the beach, Pat. You could see the ocean. I was interviewing a young uh, singer there, and you can just see the beautiful crowd. Well, you were crowd. working out on a surfboard. Was that the beach you were working on? Or this somewhere? is the beach, the beach where I learned to surf. You learned and to surf? And Ben Martin, who's the director uh -huh. of Pensacola uh, Christian Surfers, was the one that taught me to surf, and he was one of our main speakers. Was it fun? It was so much fun, and the oh, weather was wonderful. perfect. Wonderful. I mean, you saw the, and the crowd was great. It was a very peaceful, beautiful well, event. So you know, a wonderful I was thing. honored to be their MC. Well, I'm, I'm sure they were delighted to have you. And by the way, we have a great group in our audience. These are guys who drive the Operation Blessing trunks, the, the trucks, the hunger, hunger strap. Give yourself a hand, fellas. Glad to have all of you. They drive thousands of miles across America delivering food to hungry people in places like Appalachia and the inner cities. One time I was covering a hurricane or a storm, yeah. and I saw that big Operation Blessing truck come around It'd the corner, be, yeah. and I cried. It just, it, I knew it was mm. packed with aid for victims, and it just moved me so much. Well, we're trying to move. Mm. It's not quite that much as I wanted, but we're looking at about 100 million pounds of food a year with Operation Blessing, and they've they delivered. I mean, these guys, are they work night and day, and it's they wonderful. Do. Well. Uh, back to the news. What do you do about North Korea? First of all, our military says, okay, what we're going to do is test a missile defense system. So they launched a uh, missile and then they launched another missile to hit it. And apparently the test worked in case North Korea ever tries to launch a nuclear missile against us. But would the U.S. ever try to launch a preemptive strike against the North to take out its nuclear program? CBN's Eric Rosales brings us that story. North Korea test fired a ballistic missile. A preemptive nuclear strike against the U.S. The missile exploded within seconds. This test um, constitutes a direct threat. We've seen the headlines of weapons tests and the fake but provocative videos. North Korean nuclear missiles destroying what appears to be Washington, D.C., the Capitol, and the White House. Dictator Kim Jong-un claims his regime can strike the United States with a nuclear weapon. Meanwhile, he continues to test capabilities and to add to his stockpile of weapons. So what's stopping the United States from taking action? What's most important to us are the territory, the interest, and the lives of our allies and friends, uh, and not necessarily solving North Korea. Retired Lieutenant General Chip Gregson served as an Assistant Secretary of Defense in the Obama administration. He agrees with the Pentagon's decision to take the approach of deploying military assets, like the anti-missile defense system known as THAAD, to the region. Gregson adds, however, it may require sending a stronger message, like putting nuclear weapons back on the peninsula. No defense is perfect, so we do need to make sure that we have a deterrent capability beyond just having a robust defense. So I think every administration starts off by saying all options are on the table. But then when you look at what our equities and interests are in that region, it goes beyond simply eliminating North Korea. Retired Air Force officer Carl Baker says with Pyongyang's nuclear weapons getting more sophisticated, it would be difficult to swiftly knock out the entire program. Baker believes North Korea would retaliate against any U.S. strike by going after the South Korean capital of Seoul and the 25 million people in the area. I contacted the State Department where a spokesperson told me, together with the international community, we will hold Kim Jong-un accountable for his dangerous and reckless actions and serious human rights abuses through a robust international campaign. That effort includes China, but Baker admits while China might influence a relationship, it cannot necessarily control North Korea's actions. They aren't happy with North Korea developing nuclear weapons either, but again, their, their primary equity is stability on the peninsula. Well, what we're facing now is the problem. Are we going to let those guys dump a nuke on San Francisco or Anchorage, Alaska, or someplace like Guam or, or even Japan? They're, they're getting the capability to do it, and they're, they're making such bellicose noises, and they're crazy. 
Well, Eric is with us now from Washington, and we've sent the U.S. Ronald Reagan aircraft carrier to the Sea of Japan. That's two carriers there. What do you hear from the Pentagon? Yeah, that is correct, Pat. You know, the Ronald Reagan actually joins the Carl Vinson out there, and uh, we're hearing that as of right now, we're there as a deterrent and actually protection for our allies of Japan and uh, South Korea. As we know, South Korea's population is uh, one of the largest uh, 50 million people there, and uh, a lot of our service officers are actually there, military, our own military is there on the island as well. So. Uh, we're there right now just as a deterrent, but I tell you what, uh, if these sanctions do not continue to work, then, uh, then we may have to take some action, and that's coming from the president. Well, the president said, of course, he's not going to telegraph what he intends to do in any uh, military engagement, but have you heard, are there any plans actually drawn up to use military force? Well, I think that that order has actually come down all the way down to the Pentagon because uh, they are remaining very tight-lipped. We are asking them questions about uh, are we going to see anything from the air, anything from the ground, and absolutely no information like that on, on an operation mm -hmm. is uh, coming through to the media as of right now. They, uh, they are just been remaining tight-lipped over the situation. Well, how about that missile defense test? Uh, apparently it was successful. Are there going to be any more like that? Oh, I believe there, there will be more. There will be more. I mean, this sends a strong message to North Korea that their actions do not fall on deaf ears. You know, I, I kind of equate this to a game of baseball. You know, it's a seventh inning stretch right now, and uh, Kim Jong-un is down, and, and lo and behold, as a result of this missile test, a uh, successful missile test by the United States, we hit a home run. So uh, I tell you what, uh, he's going to either have to have to either step down and uh, and and know that he's been defeated, or if he does want to take it to extra innings, he's going to have to take the full force of the U.S. military. Eric, thank you so much. We look forward to more reports from you. Eric Rosales of CBN News. By the way, I was thinking about this. I'm sure we all do, but what would you do? How would you stop them? You know, we've got a bunker buster bomb. It's a huge thing. We could drop right in the middle of Pyongyang, but would that stop them? Would that pr protect uh, Seoul from the uh, onslaught of all that uh, North Korean artillery? Uh, I think there may be some kind of a cyber attack that we haven't talked about. We have cyber capability that is nothing short of awesome. And if we turned all of the forces of cyber uh, 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 security uh, against North Korea, we might be able to shut their whole economy down. Not only shut the economy down, but shut their military down, take away their command and control, and um, really render them uh, defenseless, and then go in and do what we have to do. But uh, we probably haven't we, we haven't pinpointed their nuclear uh, sites. We haven't pinpointed all of their artillery sites that are uh, confronting Seoul. It's a nasty situation. That's what happens, ladies and gentlemen, over and over again when you are indecisive in peacetime when you have a chance to do something and you don't act, when you're indecisive. Now, Truman was anything but indecisive as a leader, but he decided, I'm not going to risk a war with China. Therefore, I'm not going to allow MacArthur to take over the whole Korean uh, peninsula, which he wanted to do. I'm not going to let him march to the Yellow. I'm not going to let him seal off that peninsula. Well, as a result, uh, he, he got the various Kims. He got the Kim grandfather, and then he got the son, and now he's got the crazy grandson. And uh, that's who we're facing. And it's not pleasant. And what's been done to those people is just horrible. It has been persecution that is massive in its scale. And we've done nothing. We've put sanctions on. Well, big deal. That doesn't mean too much. So anyhow, I, I don't envy the, the planners, but I, I would think... What if there was a massive drone cluster? If we just sent in thousands of drones armed with Hellfire missiles and just went after everything? I mean, we, we can do a lot of stuff. We, we have not just conventional, we have a exotic weaponry that we haven't used yet. We could do it. Well, in other news, a massive bomb attack today took place in the capital of Afghanistan. It killed at least 80 people. John Jessup has that. That's right, Pat. The bomb was hidden in a sewage tanker truck near the Afghan presidential palace. It went off during rush hour in a highly secure diplomatic zone in Kabul, about 400 yards from the German embassy. In addition to the dozens of people who were killed, around 400 more were seriously hurt. Most of the victims are civilians, including women and children. No one has immediately claimed responsibility for the bombing. 
This is one of the worst attacks the city has ever seen. Pat? I tell you, I don't think that uh, Afghanistan is a prize worth having. Uh, I know I was there uh, on the border of Afghanistan when the Russians were doing what they did. And uh, they turned tail and went home. Uh, it's one of those things that's ungovernable. The people are broken into tribal factions. And I think we ought to just declare victory and leave. <clears throat> the longer we stay, the more painful it's going to be. But these people are just awful. And uh, so what if it goes to somebody else? Like, who cares? But I do think we ought to put some pressure on the Pakistanis. The Pakistanis have been giving uh, aid and comfort to these folks. And they're taking a lot of money from us. So uh, I've, I've been in Pakistan, was doing some business over there, met with their military leader, met with the president. Um, the, those, those people are, are amenable. They've been trained in British schools. And they, they'll listen. I know that the ISI over there has been pretty much infiltrated by uh, radicals. But nevertheless, that's something that we can deal with. But they have a lot of nuclear power, and uh, we don't want a war between Pakistan and India. So that's where we ought to put our attention and let Afghanistan go back to where it's always been in the ash bin of history. John. Pat, people in Venezuela have been taking to the streets protesting against the dictatorship of President Nicolas Maduro and the widespread shortages of food and other basic goods. Dale Hurd has a story. In the second month of almost daily protest against Venezuela's socialist government, thousands of opposition supporters marched toward the center of the capital, Caracas, only to be tear gassed. Even opposition leader Enrique Capriles was gassed and had to be helped from the scene. This elderly woman who was tear gassed says, I am sick. I've been searching for the medicine that I can't find. But the police are upset because people want to gather on a street corner to protest. At least 60 people have been killed in the two-month-long confrontation and another 1,100 have been injured. Thousands of young demonstrators calling themselves the resistance have been on the streets fighting for democracy, willing to do whatever it takes to win the fight against President Nicolas Maduro's dictatorship. Venezuela's crisis is man-made. A socialist regime introduced terrible economic policies and took away human rights. Severe shortages of food and medicine, along with hyperinflation, have Venezuelans yearning for what they once had and what most other Latin American nations take for granted. Once South America's richest country and a wash in oil, Venezuela's government under Hugo Chavez and Nicolas Maduro took less than two decades to destroy the nation's democracy and economy. And dictatorships this badly run, and with a very angry population, need a lot of tear gas. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Thanks, Dale. Pat, how long do you think Maduro can survive? You know, he's got the military, and it looks like he's surviving everything. But I tell you, there's something called the Organization of American States, Latin America. Those guys have got to say this is a cancer in our midst, and we need to go in there and take him down. The people would rise up in an instant if any kind of armed opposition came in there against him. Unfortunately, right now, he's got the military, got the guns, and all they can do is go up against tear grass and bullets. But uh, I think, without question, they ought to do that, but they're waiting for the gring gring gringos to come in. And, of course, if we come in, then everybody will say, well, it's those uh, imperialists from the north that are trying to take over our country. Think of that, that nation. They had probably the biggest oil reserves in the world. I mean, they were an incredibly rich country. They had all kinds of possibilities. And here uh, under Hugo Chavez, who was just a uh, terrible tyrant, uh, and now Maduro, who is a thug, but these guys have totally ruined a very prosperous society. We can't allow that in our hemisphere. And I, I say the OAS, and if there's any opportunity in the democratic states, you look at Colombia, you look at Argentina, you look at uh, the other countries down there, Brazil, there's no reason they don't come together and say, we, we've had this long enough. But I, I think with any kind of military force, the people would overthrow Maduro. With any kind of help, they'd do it. And I, I just don't think any of us can allow this to continue much longer. 